Role playing is the act of playing a role, and in Dungeons and Dragons, that can be interpreted however you like. It doesn't have to be about wearing costumes and speaking in accents, although that can be fun too. Here we're going to talk you through what role playing can be and how you can get the most out of your D&D experience. In Dungeons and Dragons, you'll take on the role of an adventurer, and the D&D starter set provides five ready-to-play characters for you to choose between. These are great for providing everything you need to get started. As you gain more experience, you can pick up the D&D Player's Handbook to learn how to create your own character from scratch. At its core, role-playing in D&D is about making decisions that you think your character would make. Sure, mechanical parts of the game like your class and background, abilities and other stats will factor in, but ultimately it's the backstory, personality and life experiences you create for your character that will influence their journey, how they handle their environments, and how they interact with the world. Is your character a fast talker striving to be the greatest thief of all time? Are they charming and friendly but can't keep a secret to save their lives? Maybe they were blessed by a celestial being that granted them a benefit no one knows about, not even themselves. So, let's take a look at the halfling rogue character sheet included in the D&D starter set and figure out how the information within might shape how we play them. Firstly, you'll notice your halfling is a rogue with a criminal background, so you're probably not afraid of getting your hands dirty. Your charisma score is pretty high and your background says your skill proficiencies in deception and stealth also reflect your upbringing, talking your way out of trouble and skulking past unfriendly eyes. Before you play, take a few moments to think about your character. You may want to jot down a few notes about your personality and backstory on the back of your character sheet. You don't need to share these details with the rest of the party right away. They'll learn more about you as you roleplay. Here's some ideas based on the Halfling Rogue's character sheet. You must be pretty confident sneaking into places you aren't allowed, safe in the knowledge that even if you get caught, you'll probably be able to talk the guards into going easy on you. So maybe you like to have the last word and are happy talking to anyone and everyone. It seems you've spent a lot of time around scoundrels and gamblers, so perhaps you're not as comfortable around people of higher status, preferring those from more humble beginnings. Do you make this bias clear, or are you harder to read? Perhaps you're the secretive type, always keeping your cards close to your chest, or maybe, after a couple of tankards of ale, you'll happily brag about your feats of bravery and cunning to anyone who'll listen. You don't have to sit down for your first session with a fully realised character. Don't overthink it. As you play, you can create and share more details about your character's personality and backstory. Let's say you're about to embark on the adventure, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. You and your fellow players arrive at the shores of Dragon's Rest together, each with your own reasons for setting out on this quest. After arriving at the rickety dock, the Dungeon Master, or DM, might encourage everyone to introduce themselves and share their reasons for coming here. This is a perfect chance to exercise your newfound role-playing muscles. Let's go back to your halfling rogue. As the charismatic type, you might have been the first to introduce yourself, but have chosen to remain tight-lipped about your motives. Are you worried you would have to share the fortune you're after and decide to keep quiet? Maybe you like to act tough, but once stole a teddy bear from a child and always felt guilty about it, so you carry it around in the hopes that one day you'll see them again and return it. Perhaps part of you hopes you won't see the child again because you're starting to get pretty attached to the teddy yourself. Remember, D&D is a game about social interactions and the mutual understanding between you, your DM, and the other players at the table. If you decide you want to have a backstory or history with another character or a greater tie to the adventure, be sure to check with that player or the Dungeon Master first and make sure everyone's on the same page. As you can see, when it comes to role-playing, the possibilities are endless. Just make sure to clear any decisions that might affect gameplay with your DM first. For example, your character carrying around a necklace is one thing, but if that necklace is solid gold or has a curse placed on it, you'll want to chat to them first. That kind of collaboration is what D&D is all about. Remember, the role-playing aspect of D&D only extends to whatever you're happy and comfortable with. So take it all at your own pace. As long as you and your group are having fun, you're doing it right. Good luck and happy adventuring.